Shakuntala Devi, what a woman, right? Um, Anu, what prompted you to make a biopic on her? I think it started with me wanting to make films about uh, a female protagonist who does maths and science on screen. I just felt like we need to see, you know, women in science and maths mm -hmm. uh, on screen. And also a straight comment from my daughter who said, boys love maths, girls like uh, love English. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, and growing up in India, maths is was equal to Shakuntala Devi and vice versa. Right. Uh, Anupama, how was it uh, watching your mother come alive on screen? Oh, it, it was such a beautiful experience, absolutely surreal. More than anything, not just come alive on screen, but come alive beautifully and gracefully and correctly on screen. I, I think it's pretty clear from the trailer of the film that Shakuntala Devi was no ordinary woman at all. I mean, she was determined, she was confident, she owned herself everywhere she went. And uh, I mean, I'm practically fangirling over her just by watching the trailer. So, um, I mean, it's as if being a feminist came naturally to her. So, uh, do, you both, do you both think we can categorize her as a feminist? Yes, I think she was a feminist before feminism was a movement. Mm -hmm. She had an instinct, you know, because I'll tell you what, I think her uh, because she she did not define herself by her gender. She was Shakuntala Devi. And, you know, she had been performing since the age of five. She had been earning for her family. She did not wake up in the morning saying, Oh my God, I'm a woman who loves numbers. She never said, Oh my God, I'm a woman who wants to travel the world. So I think that that conditioning was not there, like, or the deconditioning or whatever, because she did not judge herself on those parameters at all. And I don't think she believed in labels, so to speak. So uh, I, I think she was instinctively, fe you know, feminist uh, when she, you know, she was insist instinctively uh, pro, you know, homosexuality and understanding, you know, the, what, what they were, they're coming from. So I think she didn't need the world to tell her, you know, what she needs to fight against. Uh, you said that she was, uh, she did not conform to labels at all. But uh, we see that society does uh, have a thing for labels, yes. right? So, um, what do you think the kind of chatter was around here? And I'm sure uh, um, Anupama, you can also uh, attest to this that there was a lot of uh, stereotypes that uh, you know she was breaking, and people were talking about it at the time. Um, you know that to understand this, one must understand that during those times. I mean, we're talking about the 70s and all. She was far, far ahead of her time. She was a very, very progressive woman, and there was bound to be a banter because the, they weren't the, they weren't prepared for this. You know, for a woman who was so ahead, she never looked back. It was always about moving ahead, doing new things, con not, not only looking within India, but going, uh, uh, you know, traveling worldwide, you know, doing whatever you felt, you know, uh, achieving whatever you could. There were no boundaries, mm. you know, probably. She responded to people putting her in a box. And I think people love putting you in a box, right? I mean, to understand a person, you have to first put in a box. So if you are a mathematician, you have to be the serious person, you know, you have to be respectable, you have to be this. So she didn't care. She was, she could like, you know, she was a, she was a fun person. She, you know, she, she had a good laugh. She had a great sense of humor. She loved the arts. She loved singing, dancing, music. Her friends were from all over the world. She used to play Fred Astaire and, you know, dance the whole night. Sex in the city kind of parties in the 50s in England and she used to make dosas for everyone. I, I feel like, you know, you, people like them don't, I mean, you can keep putting you, putting her in a box and, you know, ranting over it. She was off to her next adventure. Living life to the fullest. Living life to the fullest because she, she did what she wanted. What you thought of her was rather irrelevant. The only person who mattered in her life was Anu. And that's what it was. She was her Achilles heel. <laughs> she was her, you know, that one thing that could, you know, break her heart or or make her the happiest woman on earth. Her one-liners, like 90% uh, of the one-liners on the film are hers, you know, which we have taken from her interviews. We all have to learn from her because we are always responding to what people are saying about us. And I think in today's day and age, it's very important, yeah, because all of us are seeking validation through a bloody social media you know like how many likes you have and 
I mean, what is? I mean, our self worth is determined by other people. How yeah. how have we come to this? And there was this lady seventy years back who, you know, at five years age knew that you know I I am worth something and I'm going to do something. 